Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we're joined by Amal Jain, who's the managing partner at Emphasis Consulting. Emphasis Consulting are leaders in the management consulting industry. And Amal joins us today to discuss how innovation fuels business transformation and how organizations can make the most out of innovation. So again, thanks for joining us today, Amal, and welcome to the jam. Thank you very much, Mitchell, and thank you very much for inviting me here and sharing uh, my and our perspective on innovation, uh, which is definitely the key pillar for organization transformation these days. Uh, happy to interact with you. Absolutely. It's a pleasure. Um, so just a question to get the ball rolling. Um, what is the role of innovation in business transformation? And what do you think the different forms of innovation um, that organizations are dealing with in today's world? Very interesting question and uh, good that you started with basics. Uh, the role of innovation in business transformation, Mitchell, is uh, in helping organizations adapt, evolve, and grow with changing times. I think the very core of transformation is, transformation means when you transform from one state to another, right? It could be in terms of how you operate in the market. And when we talk about businesses, in terms of new products and services that you might launch, in terms of how your services and business models might have transformed. So innovation plays a key role because it acts as an enabler to help you transform your business. And uh, when you talk about the types of innovation or that firms are dealing with today, I would say mainly you can categorize it in two forms. One is we call as disruptive innovation, you might have heard. And the other one is uh, uh, business model innovation. When you say business model innovation, I think uh, to make it understand better, look at Netflix. Uh, it's, a, it's a classic example of how technology, how innovation help, has helped an organization be current with changing times and also transform into a completely different model, model to then what they started with. And Netflix, as we know, started with a DVD distributor company. And today they are the content providers. They are the content creators rather, and they are the pioneer of on-demand videos. Uh, therefore, uh, you know, the business model innovation is one of the key forms of innovation that organizations are going with. Another category in which uh, lo people look at innovation is incremental, as I said earlier, and, and in a disruptive innovation. Incremental means you try to make small changes incrementally over a period of time. And over a long period of time, you see that your business has transformed. This is least disruptive to your existing business but it is also very slow and it has it comes with its own set of challenges and disruptive is when you are ready to overhaul your business completely when you're ready to cannibalize a part of it and and optimize your internal efficiencies and look at what opportunities might uh, lay ahead in, in in the market uh, that's what i would say is a form of innovation that we see in the market Absolutely. And you talked there a little bit about disruption and the concept of disruption. How does innovation differ from disruption? And does innovation always involve change in product offerings and services and things like that? <laughs> Very interesting question. And I, I get surprised when people talk about innovation differently from disruption. I think disruption is an effect of innovation because Innovation is the concept of translating an idea into products or services that creates value for the customers, value for the users. And disruption is displacing an existing market. I don't think you can have disruption without innovation. So uh, one is a cause, one is an effect, uh, to, to your point on disruption versus innovation. And um, you, the second question was around, uh, does it always involve a change in product or service offerings? Was that right? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a yes and no answer. Uh, the reason is a change in product is not, not necessarily an innovation. You can change certain configuration around a product or a service, and you can still be relevant with changing times. But innovation, what it does to you is it questions the very belief of your past. What it does to you is it helps you change the way those products and services are delivered. And, and that is where innovation plays a big role. It definitely increases your chances of changing a product or services, but it gives you an ability to react faster uh, to changing times and have a competitive edge uh, that may not always be within a product or service. Absolutely, yes. And the competitive edge is something that lots of people are striving for at the moment. 
Um, how do you think uh, organizations can measure business value delivered through innovation? That's my favorite topic because I always talk about value delivered. And, and one of the famous quotes that we have internally is you only people feel pain, right? We see so many great ideas that come on a, on, on a daily basis and organizations sometimes get fascinated with a particular technology without realizing the value it might deliver to your businesses, to your customers. So I say one thing uh, to start, I say first, identify the problem you're trying to solve. That's my favorite sentence. I think people who work with me know that's the first question I always ask. What is the problem you're trying to solve? Who are you trying to solve for? And how do you measure value? And, and I have this uh, five criteria against which we measure value. And, and first one of that is your experience. That means it's a touch and feel. Uh, you do not realize value in terms of dollars. You do not realize value in any other quantitative form, but the customers feel good. The stickiness increases. Your NPS and customer satisfaction score goes up. So that's where the experience comes. And it is either in you know, your customer experience or your employee experience. The second value is, and that is where we get into quantifiable measures is, efficiency. That means your ability to do a same process, same product delivery faster than you were or increasing the throughput. That means I'm able to process more transactions per hour than I was able to do before. So that's where the efficiency element comes. And then comes a cost factor. So am I able to reduce the cost of doing business? Am I able to reduce the cost of servicing to the customers? And am I, when, I, when I'm able to pass that uh, to my, my end clients, definitely there is a lot of value you can realize. And the most obvious is the revenue element. That's the fourth one, I would say, where I am able to generate more revenue. I'm able to generate more revenue through cost sell or through change in business model, where we know we have uh, made the whole subscription model, as you know, is, is the new way to go in most of the technology companies and product companies. And the last most important and uh, mostly forgotten because it is not at the front end is your risk management and compliance management. A lot of innovation value can actually be measured through your risk controls and measure. It's like an insurance where you want to pay the premium, but you premium, sorry, but you don't want to ever realize the value out of it. So those are five ways you can measure business value in innovation and transformation. Fantastic. And obviously we know um, technology is such a big part of our lives and uh, business and in the enterprise space. Um, how do you think technology has changed the way we think about business transformation? Oh, absolutely. I think technology, what it has done. And before I get there, I want to say there's no business transformation. There's transformation now. And uh, there is no strategy today a business or an owner comes up with that does not have technology at the core of it. But to answer your specific question, what technology has done is, is not in terms of what the possibilities are. There have always been possibilities. I said today's innovation was sci-fi once. Uh, and, but what it has actually done is it has given technology in the hands of you and me, the everyday users, the organizations to do to experiment, to look at what they need to do. And that's how transformation has evolved. You know, the number of startups, the number of new small organizations in the last few years, we know, uh, has changed the way we look at every single thing in our daily lives. So I believe what technology has done, it, it has given the power in everyday users to change the way they think, they react, and they operate in the market. Absolutely. And um, just to kind of sum everything up, um, how do you think the best way to fuel acceleration of innovation and transformation is, and what do you think is the real key to being an innovative organization? I think the way to fuel acceleration of innovation or, or being uh, the key to an organization is the mindset. Innovation is not about technology, and that is where I want to, I cannot emphasize uh, more. It is about mindset of every individual in an organization. 
it is about changing the culture and that culture will not come by from top down it has to be something that everybody in the organization feels about we are running an innovative you know initiative within our organization around innovation where we want a grassroots innovation we want every single individual to have innovation in their kpis uh, they should not have any fear of failure they should be able to change the future not perfect the past uh, they should not be looking at what has been done before and try to add more layers of perfection. They should be willing to experiment, fail, learn from it, stand up again, experiment again and move on. I think that's the real key to innovation. And we always say it is not MVP with most of the organizations start with them are very successful. It is not minimum viable product. It is maximum value potential in an innovation that will lead to an innovative organization. Absolutely. Well, again, fantastic advice there, Amal. Thank you so, so much for um, joining us today. Uh, and we look here forward to hearing more from you guys at Emphasis Consulting in the future. Thank you very, very much, Mitchell. And thank you once again for having me here. It was great interacting with you.